Good afternoon. Thank you everyone for attending this training today. If this is your first time, welcome. I am your host, Wendy Bray. I have here with me today, my colleague, Curtis Brandon. And as you can see on the panelists, some wonderful people that, will be, that I will be introducing to you once we get started. So a few housekeeping notes. There will be a survey once you exit this session. I'm requesting that you please complete the survey because we use this information to implement and make improvements to the trainings that we offer to the small business community. I am keeping the chat and the Q&A box open. Any questions that you may have for us, please direct them to everyone in the Q&A box. Now I wanna test the chat box. How is everyone doing this great afternoon or morning for those on the West Coast? You can just go ahead and uh, type it in the chat box. That's good, I see everyone is doing good. All right. So let's get started. The training today is part of our Diversifying Your Portfolio series. It's a new series and it's all about diversifying your portfolio. So what does that mean? Well, potential clients or potential partners, just don't limit yourself. So today I am introducing you to Director Robin Card, Business Development Principal Jeff Furdock, and Small Business Advocate Virginia Foley, as they introduce you to General Dynamics Information Technology and discuss some opportunities. So thank you to the panelists for being here with us today. And Robin, I will now turn it over to you. Hello, um, can everybody, can you hear me okay? Great, um, I'm Robin Cart and um, the director of the Small Business Office for um, General Dynamics Information Technology. And thank you for having us on here today. Um, our small business office uh, performs a lot of outreach uh, for the company. We're mainly uh, the main conduit for small businesses to connect with our uh, growth personnel, our business development and uh, um, and our program leads and and I'm glad that we've been able to have a, a couple of our program people from the VA uh, from our VA growth team join us today. Um, next slide, please. Um, so today what we're going to talk about is first I'm going to start off and provide a, an overview of general dynamics as a company as a as kind of our our mothership company our uh, the big company that under which there are 10 different business units. And then I'll talk a little bit about um, GDIT and then we'll move into um, our growth team uh, talking about our federal health uh, work that we do. And then uh, we'll end with Virginia Foley from the small business office talking about some of the ways uh, for small businesses to work with our office uh, and, and become procurement ready and to help us help you make those uh, connections. So next slide, please. So again, uh, I'm Robin, Jeff will be talking after me and then Virginia Foley will, will follow behind. I believe he's also on the call today, our small business liaison officer, Josh Elfie. Um, uh, we have an, one other person, so there's four of us in the small business office. Are the fourth person who actually uh, organized this whole event and made made this uh, facilitated this uh, this training is William Medlicott, um, and then our v VA solutions advisor at GDIT is John Williamson, and then uh, we also have one of our subcontracts administrators, Mr. Joe Roberson, in attendance as well. Uh, next slide. So as um, I wanted to kind of talk to you about uh, how General Dynamics uh, is set up uh, the business model. Uh, basically, General Dynamics is our, um, as a company, is is 
is not centrally organized. They, we do have a corporate office, uh, but uh, they decentralized all of the, the services and products we provide into 10 different business units, of which General Dynamics is one of those units. Um, so across the board, there's basically four operating groups, um, and you see a, there's a picture for each one of them. Within the operating groups, uh, there are 10 different business units and overall at the general dynamics level, uh, our revenue is uh, roughly 38.5 billion and over 100,000 employees with all these companies, uh, business units combined. The four business areas are aerospace and uh, in aerospace, and you'll see on the slide, the names of the company, the business units that are individual companies below. So for example, aerospace includes two companies. One of them's Gulfstream, which is, you know, the fancy jet company and then jet aviation. So the aerospace group, um, their business is, uh, they work with, uh, building jets for for business, um, aircraft repairs, uh, support and completion services. Um, they do a lot of investing in uh, creating new aircraft models and technologies and also customer service. Uh, so they do a lot of R&D type uh, work and uh, to create these state of the art jets. I wish I could say I've been in one, but I haven't. They're a cousin company to us, but um, uh, it would be nice to get a ride on the Gulfstream jet. But that's those are the cool uh, kids in school that we kind of like to think of them that way. Um, another group is our marine system, systems group, and they, they build nuclear subs and they uh, they do surface combatant and auxiliary ship design for the Navy. So th this group does mostly Navy work. Uh, they they have marine engineering expertise and uh, basically support the defense industrial base. Um, and also some uh, for the Jones Act, these are the ships like the merchant marine ships. We also do uh, work for them. Uh, Another uh, group is the Combat Systems Group. Uh, these, uh, this group does manufacturing and integration of land solutions, which includes any wheeled or tracked combat vehicles, uh, weapon systems and munitions, and uh, especially with the munitions and these vehicles, they, they work towards uh, a speedy um, speed to market, meaning we need to get uh, these items to our warfighters very quickly. And then the final group is the fourth group that GDIT falls within, and uh, this is the technologies group. So we do services in uh, technology services, uh, electronic hardware, and special software integration. We do military work. We support um, kind of what makes us unique is we support all of the government and even to federal and uh, even state and, and local um, customers. So we've got, we support the military agencies, the intelligence aid agencies and federal civilian customers to include like health healthcare. Um, the two companies in the technology group are GDIT, which is General Dynamics Information Technology. That's my company. And uh, we call them our sister company is GD Mission Systems. And um, um, we do mission support services, IT, mobile communication, computers, command and control, and cyber mission systems uh, for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. reconnaissance. So that's kind of general dynamics as a whole, uh, of which we're one piece, and uh, GDIT is our um, is the group that's speaking with you today. Um, next slide. So given that we're such a, a large company, uh, we thought it would be important, each, each of these business units has their own small business representative. Uh, GDIT has an office of four people, three of which are on the call today, but uh, we wanted to make sure we provided you with contact information for our SBLO officers, officers so that, you know, maybe, you're on the call, but you don't do anything in information technology, but you would be able to support combat systems. So um, feel free to reach out to any of these um, 
uh, contact emails. As a, a corporation, General Dynamics, we have a supplier diversity council that uh, that gets together on a month monthly basis. So we do talk with each other across these business units. If you're trying to reach a uh, one of the other business units and and you can't get a response, you can reach out to us and we'll help to make sure that uh, someone uh, speaks with you. So, and there's more information on this slide uh, as to the specific things that um, that our companies are doing. Um, next slide, please. So GDIT as uh, we're, we're a big company of our own. We actually doubled in size about uh, three years ago through an acquisition. We have over 30,000 30, employees, um, 14,000 technologists. Uh, we are actually, we're uh, very supportive in hiring veterans, retired veterans. Um, you know, our personnel, a lot of them have security clearances. We're pretty much all over the world. Um, you know, we're in 30 different countries um, and uh, have a lot of experience um, and a lot of contracts. So the reason I wanted to tell you this is, you know, again, my office is four people and uh, we're trying to connect you to the right person in this uh, labeled diverse and talented workforce. So Virginia will be talking to you a little bit later about how you can help us make that connection for you. Uh, but it's a it's a really good company to work for. Um, and we do uh, have uh, quite a lot of focus on small business uh, participation in our contracts. Next slide. So so the way um, the, these are some of the, the, this is some of the work that uh, we do uh, and what is important to our growth uh, teams, um, some of the specifics. And um, I actually would like to go ahead and go to the next slide because I want to tell you one more a breakdown. These are some of the, the specific areas where we look to team with small business. So if you, um, you know, if you have a unique skill or a niche capability with any of these areas, um, you know, do reach out to uh, the small business office and um, Jeff can speak more specifically to what they're looking for for the VA contracts that we have. But again, these are kind of, these are the items we, we look for at GDIT when we're looking to pair with small business. Next slide. Um, so GDIT itself, we're a business unit under general dynamics, uh, but we are organized into three basic um, units as well. So we have our sec our various sectors. Defense is the is a big sector that would be your army, your navy, air force, um, uh, those type of customers. Um, and the the way the reason why we're organized this way is because we are customer focused right so um so you know because we're so big you know we we have a division that just focuses on defense so our growth personnel and our business development personnel um are assigned to these di various divisions so uh, it's a way of kind of of um digging down in and trying to hook hook up the right people together. So our defense group is is pretty clear. Anything that's in uh, under the DOD, uh, we would connect you with folks in our defense division. Um, our second division is is combined federal civilian and health. So right now we're doing a lot of growth in this division. We're doing very well, uh, have a very strong customer base. Um, so we, we are in need of small businesses in this area. And then uh, also the state, uh, and uh, state by state, we mean state and local that also rolls up in our federal civilian group. And then the third and final uh, division is our um, intelligence homeland security uh, division. So th that is the group that, you know, supports the secret stuff and, um, you know, the three letter agencies. So, um, and I think, uh, let's go to the next slide. 
Yes, yeah, so that's that's kind of an overview of general dynamics as a whole. Again, there's 10 business units. Each business unit has its own small business office. We're here talking uh, about general dynamics information technology, which we are divided up into three divisions and uh, um, that's, you know, that's the way to get in is to really come through our small business office. Um, any questions so far? Robin, so we have a question. Whom can we contact that buys the lighting for your facility? Um, most if if you want to um, reach out to anyone in the company and you're a small business, you're trying to reach a specific target, please reach out to our office and our contact information is uh, provided uh, later on. And the way that our small business office is um, structured is that um, there's four of us and there's one person assigned to each of the divisions. So if you know that you are, and Virginia will speak to this a little more later, but if you know that you're targeting um, a defense customer, then you would go to Virginia. If it's federal civilian, you would go to William Medlicott. If it's general sales, like the one just mentioned, uh, you can reach out to me directly and I will try to connect you with the uh, right party in our supply chain management group. Oh, I see lots of questions here. Um, okay, I'm sorry, my computer is kind of freezing. Uh, that's so okay. Another one, I know this is definitely a smaller portion of this entire conversation, but does General Dynamics ever require any real estate related services? I'd imagine commercial leasing purchase or relocating employees or offices would be a relevant need. Um, that's a great question. And um, I know coming out of the pandemic, now again, I'm not a buyer, so I don't know what we're looking for right now, but I do know overall we are uh, due to the pandemic, we have a, a quite a few more people uh, work teleworking and working from home. And uh, so um, we're actually trying to, in the process of reducing our physical footprint in that manner. However, if the customer is in need of a facility, um, then that, again, since we're customer base, and if that's part of one of the, you know, the deliverables for a contract that we're pursuing, then we would be in need of, uh, we could possibly be in need of assistance when it comes to facilities. Okay, thank you. We're just gonna move on to the next part of the presentation. Excellent. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Jeff Furdock here. I'm the uh, growth lead for uh, the Department of Veteran Affairs account here at GDIT. Happy to chat with everybody. Um, <clears throat> as Robin mentioned, uh, we are part of the Fed civilian group. Of that total group, I think that the federal health group is almost a third uh, of that business. We have a, a book of business in the federal health team of about a billion dollars annually. As you'll see from the slide, over 3,000 uh, employees. We have, uh, you know, 30 different locations where we have folks and we support all of the federal health agencies, over 20 of them. So just about any agency you can imagine that does uh, anything in the federal health arena, VA, uh, excuse me, GDIT uh, has some uh, some engagement with that uh, that that agency. Uh, we focus on you know things like technology, uh, health systems, and, and science, and that I'll get into on the next slide. Uh, one of the major things we provide is you know cloud services. We're the largest cloud provider within the federal space. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, um, three main verticals within the federal health space. Uh, as you can imagine, GDIT is a large systems integrator, has a very strong focus on technology. I mentioned cloud earlier. Uh, we also do a lot around analytics and AI, uh, DevSecOps, a uh, big infrastructure player across the whole uh, GDIT, but specifically in federal health as well. And in managed services, for instance, we are providing the um, Enterprise service desk currently to the internal enterprise service desk to the Department of Veterans Affairs. Now, it's a contract we've had for a number of years. 
We also have our health systems. That is where most of our CMS business uh, sits. So do a lot with fraud, waste, and abuse, supporting claims processing uh, and electronic uh, records. Uh, supported things like VA.gov and other, or excuse me, uh, CMS.gov and other large um, plays there at CMS. And then that third vertical is the, you know, the, the sciences area. So the bioinformatics, um, uh, you know, a lot of the high end uh, uh, medical computing uh, services, public safety and public research. So it's a, it's a very fast growing uh, uh, vertical within the federal health uh, team. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, we are across, you know, every federal health agency. This is just a uh, quick peek at some of them. I've mentioned some of the things that we're doing for the Department of Veterans Affairs uh, and including the enterprise service desk. We also provide uh, a lot of scanning uh, services to the VA. So we take all of the for VBA, all of the paper records from veterans, uh, whether it's medical or personnel records or MPF files and scan those in and get them into their uh, VBMS system, which manages all their files. Uh, do a ton of work for CMS is probably our largest federal health customer. Things like, uh, you know, cloud computing. I mentioned some of the high performance computing data warehouses and some of the financial systems as well. Also, NIH and across all optives and, uh, you know, health and human services. And we also have a very strong presence in the military health as well. We've got some traumatic brain injury uh, engagements with them uh, as well as many other programs. Next slide, please. One of the things that GDIT really focuses on, uh, not only in federal health, but across the whole GDIT is bringing capability from different agencies. So again, I mentioned we work in all of these 20 agencies. So we oftentimes will like to try to take the goodness that uh, we've developed with customers, whether it's in CMS, VA, wherever, and bring those to other agencies. So for instance, we, um, talked about, I mentioned the TBI research we're doing for the uh, military health arena. We are taking some of that capability and lessons learned and trying to work with the VA around suicide prevention and other mental health issues. And in this slide, we see a couple of the different other examples where we are doing that cross agency. So I mentioned <clears throat> some of the AI work we're doing in VA. We had a pilot for skin lesions where we're able to take pictures of different skin lesions and with a, I think it's almost 90% accuracy, are able to determine, the doctors are able to determine whether they're cancerous or not. So it's a, it's, that's been a great, you know, prototype and starting to roll out across the VA. Uh, again, mentioned the TBI research. We do a lot with logistics and supply chain uh, and of actually working on, on a large initiative with the VA right now to try to support support that. Uh, and then, you know, we do a lot again with medical labs uh, and 3D processing for the uh, HHS account also. Next slide, please. So what GDIT looks for in our small business partners, you know, obviously it's always great when you have uh, engagements with the agency, although that's not, you know, that's not the VL handle, you don't have that. I, you know, I think what we look for is partners that really want to work with us. Uh, a reciprocal relationship, you know, companies that uh, want to partner with us to actually help develop opportunities, to develop capabilities, to jointly work those opportunities uh, throughout the whole capture process, whether it's engaging with the customers, participating in the capture and proposal uh, efforts, and then obviously, you know, if we win, then developing those, uh, those programs and delivering on those programs. So we're really looking for, you know, that handful of really strong partners. And in this, in this account, we have a need all the time for partners. It's, 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 an agency, or it's an agency that focuses very strongly on small business. So there is always a, a strong component to every bit that we go after for small business. Next slide, please. All right, I am finished. Thank you. Thank you. We have a few questions. Um, in the chat, in the Q and A right now, you ready to answer a few of them for us? Like, hey, um, you I, I see some of the questions and I think some of them will be answered by Virginia in her presentation. And then I, I say we open it up at that time. Will that work? Okay. Yes, that will be fine. 
I'm sorry. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Every time I click the button, my computer is freezing. So we'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to you, Virginia. And then um, uh, for the participants, we will start addressing questions at the end after her presentation. Excellent. Thank you so much. And as Robin mentioned, yes, a lot of the questions will be answered um, even on this very first slide. So we recommend two different approaches to working with GDIT as a small business. The first being the passive approach. I see a lot of queries in um, the chat box asking, does GDIT need civil engineers um, or janitorial services or, you know, the host of other, other items as well? The answer is um, we don't always have the insight as a small business office into what our respective departments might need or what general dynamics um, as a whole needs as well which is why we have um, the ESRP tool to conduct searches within to pull out the um, small businesses that are capable of fulfilling these requests. And um, Robin did a great job of running down the different business units that GDIT has. Um, not only do we GDIT use this search engine, but also um, you know, the general dynamics mission systems, electric boat, all of these companies as well also leverage this tool. So I highly recommend um, completing the information within. Um, all you need to do is go to our enterprise registration um, portal and complete your profile. We ask for specific keywords as possible. Um, any past performance um, that you have relevant to the experience would be amazing. Um, it really does help me out when I'm completing searches if you use the specific and niche items that you're able to address with your capabilities. We also recommend updating your profile because it is used quite frequently within GDIT alone and we don't want to um, miss your profile um, just because something is out of date or you have a, a capability that you are proficient with included. Um, and I hope this answers most of the questions about um, does GDIT need um, this, this capability? The answer is um, we, will we will pull the list um, of your capabilities um, and provide this to the um, appropriate requester um, once that is done. You can kind of see um, the flow chart there, um, which shows that um, you register in the portal, um, you submit your capabilities, um, and we um, go ahead and um, send that information over and then you are contacted by the appropriate party after. Now for the second approach, if you don't mind navigating to the next slide, this is more of our proactive approach and it's really a recommended step because it gives you more transparency into the process and more interaction with people like myself, Robin, William and Joshua in the small business office. The first step of this um, is really to identify um, the federal customers to target. So this is something you would do internally as a, as a company, identifying what your niche areas are and where you fit best. Um, what past performance do you have that either would complement uh, a growth in your area or um, what past performance would work on a spe um, specific government contract or with a government um, agency that would benefit them. It's really about identifying those pain points and identifying what capabilities that you have that would resolve those. The next step is to break into the customer, get to know them, um, you know, either reach out to the Ozdaboos and um, you know, develop those client relationships. Um, but overall, um, what we're really seeking is um, understanding that you can see the customer needs as well, that you understand their upcoming forecast, that you know that the opportunities that you are looking to pursue fit both you and the customer needs and um, would, would benefit each other instead of just, you know, kind of identifying, all right, this needs to be done and not necessarily within your wheelhouse, but pursuing it regardless. We really are looking um, and hoping that you're able to identify strong stories um, that will help expand your experience. After that is identifying the subcontracting opportunities in that pipeline that you've established, um, identifying upcoming opportunities that would work best for you as a subcontractor and in doing so, creating a value proposition, which would express how your company would fit into that environment. And especially with GDIT, um, if GDIT is the prime uh, contractor you're um, selecting for a subcontractor um, role there, um, think about what GDIT offers and what you can do to complement that for the specific customer. And overall, just using the experience um, with the customer to, to bolster the proposition, um, to express how you are able to best um, address and best uh, work with the customer there. And then once you have curated this, um, this proposal, this um, value proposition, we re request that you contact us about six to 12 months in advance before the 
RFP is released. Um, and yes, we do need that time. Um, GDIT is a large company and we do um, take a quite a bit of time to um, I decide when that we're going to be bidding and then establishing our team. And if we do not have a team by six months, um, that would be a surprise to a lot of folks. Um, so we do try and build teams early. So please do reach out to us early and um, the our team will review your value proposition. And once we do so, we'll send it to the appropriate decision makers internally to review your proposition. And, um, and they will be then um, in, in charge of the re response out to you. They'll let you know if this is something that they are interested in, or we as the SBO will let, um, re re send the message back to you that um, this is not something that, you know, um, th that we're looking to a team with additionally at that time. I really recommend this proactive approach just because uh, you do get, like I mentioned, more transparency into the process, more of an onus and ability to kind of gain the attention of these internal decision makers at GDIT to state your case of working um, on the proposal or the opportunity. Um, and also just, you know, um, you get more of a chance to, to develop the pipeline there. So that's so one thing that we do like to keep uh, mention is that you are the key partner in driving the exceptional customer experience. Um, you know, these actionable insights, um, you know, are, you know, provided from data that we're recommending with pipeline and relationship building. We request that you understand the people, processes, and technology um, that, you know, we're looking for you to design improvement initiatives um, with the customer in mind and uh, take a look at the standardized enterprise tools that are being used, the platforms and processes. Next slide, please. And the other recommendation that we have are register on sam.gov. This is always, um, you know, we cannot, um, you know, say that this is something you must do and um, nor should um, this be expressed, but I really do think it does make things easier for when you're approaching federal contracts, understanding the reps and searches that will be required um, from different large businesses um, by doing so in a standardized form does help the um, general business acumen. Uh, maintain your company website. This is something that our BD folks will mention um, that, you know, they do review and, you know, having up to date information and a clear point of contact is very relevant. Contacting Azdaboos, partnering with other small businesses. Um, you know, we, we are more than happy to, you know, take your uh, value propositions into consideration, but we highly recommend a robust pipeline that's inclusive of both subcontracting, priming, and teaming um, opportunities um, within, within your departments. Utilize your industry contacts, um, attend events. Uh, you know, GDIT is attending a lot of events out there, and so are the government customers. Uh, luckily, since COVID restrictions have lifted, we've seen a lot more activity, and it's a great way of meeting um, the decision makers out there and starting with smaller opportunities as well. So with that, um, happy to navigate over to the final slide with the question. Oh, outreach highlights. Um, so we also do have um, the outreach um, effort for General Dynamics Small Business Office virtual chats. So they are weekly Zoom calls for small businesses interested in working with GDIT from 1 to 2 p.m. Um, on Wednesdays and they are a great method for companies um, to learn about GDIT's small business practices. It's a space for small businesses to ask us questions. Um, you know, we, we offer this forum as a recurring and open invitation because we want to hear from you and we want to see what we can do to support you best. Um, so I highly recommend this, even if you don't even know what questions to ask right now, um, there might be other small businesses on the call asking questions you haven't even thought about. We've received a lot of great feedback on how um, useful these meetings have been. And we've had a lot of great guest speakers on to educate some of our small businesses as well. And we hope to have you join us on one. And the next slide, please. All right, um, so uh, as Robin mentioned, our contact information is here. Um, William Medlicott is the best point of contact for opportunities rela related to Veterans Affair and other FEDSEV agencies. Um, for DOD opportunities, you would contact me, Virginia Foley, and for IHS opportunities, uh, Joshua Elfie. Um, and in that case, I think we did have some additional questions. Um, were there any in the chat that, uh, that drew your guys' eye? Yes, Virginia. I'm pulling up the Q&A. We had a few questions. 
Will any of the panelists' business units be attending the Association United States Army Conference in DC in October, and if possible, to meet there? So that is an excellent question, and the answer is yes. Um, so you are able to pull up the booth details on the um, the uh, event website. Um, if you would like to reach out to me directly, I can um, send you over the SBO um, contacts that are attending. Um, but yes, uh, GDIT has less of a presence in that area. Um, so our, um, some of our business units will be attending. Another question was, can you post the link to the enterprise registration portal? But if you navigate over to the chat, uh, Robin actually posted that information for you. Uh, you can let us know if you would like for uh someone to repost it again if it's too far up another question if you are new to federal system and do not have federal experience does gdit still consider such startups and partners so i would say um we we do work with small businesses with a spectrum of past performance of course when it comes to working with uh, gdit we do like to make sure that the companies that we are working with are financially viable, are not disbarred, um, have certain uh, qualifications for the processes um, to move forward, such as if there is a cybersecurity uh, requirement. Um, so I would say, yes, we do work with um, a, a variety of businesses with past performance. However, if you are very new um, to the field and you aren't too certain if you are ready for um, federal work, if you don't know if your systems are, we're happy to send you resources and links to make sure that you have um, all of the information um, up to date that perhaps you, um, you know, your cybersecurity hygiene is up to, you know, up to federal standards, things like that, that you may not be necessarily considering um, at, at this moment. So, um, and if the question is geared more to um, not having past performance in an area and you were ready to go in the area of federal procurement, uh, Yes, um, we, we do. I would say, you know, it is about that value proposition. We still want you to be able to demonstrate that you do have a knowledge of the customer needs, pain points, um, and highly request that and um, highlighting that and the innovative technology that you provide um, when sending those value propositions over to us. I have been signed up uh, on the portal for at least a year, but never been contacted. Would you recommend that I reach out to the small business office? or are you able to recommend any next steps? Yes, so uh, I can say I, I do use this portal quite frequently. I have seen successes from it, so I am a big fan of it, but I understand that you don't get that transparency. You don't get to see how many times your profile has been viewed, how many times your name is placed into a list, and then um, perhaps you didn't make that uh, initial selection criteria. And that's why we recommend that proactive approach that we outlined as well because um, the portal is great. It is very useful. It is very, um, it is a, a great tool to have, and it's a great tool to be part of. Um, but if you are looking just to make sure that, you know, um, GDIT is considering you for the opportunities that are in your pipeline and you're considering, um, that proactive approach is highly recommended because it does give you that outreach to the small business office and then um, a, you're able to check in with us and there's just more communication and there's a little more insight um, that you're able to obtain from that method. We are already doing work with GDMS but have never gotten a hit from GDIT. Does our profile in the GD portal cross over from GDMS to GDIT, or do we need to somehow initiate that? So for the enterprise registration portal, um, that is across uh, both, you know, all, all of our companies, absolutely. If you're working with, uh, you know, one of our business units as a supplier, a supplier in, um, that might be a different database, but otherwise we should be, if you are registered in our portal, we should be able to view you and pull your information. Um, if you are currently working with GDMS, it could be possibly that GDIT doesn't necessarily do the same work that um, you provide, and that's why GDMS is leveraging you. Or um, we just haven't um, had that specific need for your capabilities yet, or a host of reasons. If there are anything that you want me to look into specifically, if you want me to check on your registration on the portal, I am more than happy to do so. Um, but thank you for also supporting GDMS. Um, but it could be for a variety of different reasons um, if, if you are registered in the portal and I'm happy to kind of look into that with you if, if you'd like. Thank you, Virginia. Of course. How can we locate your request for proposals? 
Um, so our requests for proposals are issued by our procurement and um, subcontracts teams. So those are issued um, specifically from um, those roles within GDIT, but we don't have a forecast published stating which opportunities that we're going to be pursuing or necessarily at all times that the needs that we have from small businesses. Um, so there won't be an open um, requisition for specific items and you won't be able to see have that visibility into what we are pursuing um, just because we really do like protecting our customer information and um, we don't want to necessarily broadcast that kind of data too much. However, what I do recommend to small businesses that are looking at, um, you know, the potential um, teaming opportunities with GDIT is to, to get a good idea of what we're pursuing. Take a look at our contracts, uh, gdit.com slash contracts, um, to see where we hold IDIQs and um, where our contracts lie, where we're performing, and then understand um, where we might be um, pr pursuing um, future opportunities in that space, um, because I think that will give you a, a fairly a uh, large insight into to what we'll be bidding on. How do we locate the weekly chats that you spoke about so that we can register? Excellent, so they're invite only, so you're welcome to reach out to me directly, virginia.foley at gdit.com, and I will be happy to include you on the invite. Um, so please reach out to me via email, um, and I'll definitely send you over that invitation. And I'm glad that you're gonna be joining us, thank you. Just to confirm, for the Association United States Army Conference, uh, your email is virginia.folley at gdit.com. That is correct. And, um, and when you go to the event website as well, you'll be able to search which companies are attending and their booth number. Um, it is actually pretty useful on that. So um, that's what I'll be doing. I'll, I'll send you over that link and um, identify um, which business units areas are, are coming. And then I'll send you over those SBO links too. Um, and make sure that you have that um, information on how to access the other booth numbers in case there's anyone else that you're looking to visit too. I'm scrolling through some of the questions. Oh, you're good. Do you know which of your mission areas uh, you might or GDIT needs the most? Or which has mission the most need? Has the most need. So I would say, um, as far as need goes when it comes to small businesses, it's pretty um, discrepant across the board, but we recommend that um, the opportunity, proactive opportunity search, because we're saying, uh, we're requesting that you reach out to us um, for opportunities that are six to 12 months in release, because that's when our BD and our, um, you know, internal decision makers are actively looking for small businesses to join our team rather than um, post award or execution, which is, um, you know, kind of active contracts um, where um, we would say, you know, there, there's already a team in place and, uh, you know, all those decisions were made, you know, far in advance for in anticipation of a proposal for award. Um, so when it, when it comes to the most need, I would say it's going to be um, the opportunity stage and it will be, uh, you know, I would say you're, your highest chances will be in areas that you either have, you know, kind of, um, you know, that that suitable capability, um, that relevant past performance, or you know, a sp specific in-depth uh, customer um, intimacy or capability. Thank you. Um, waiting to see if we have any more questions uh, to respond to. Let me see. And Wendy, I've I've posted some links. Um, the the main link to get anywhere within GDIT is gdit.com, and from there you can get to our small business page. Um, we actually provide quite a bit of information about what we do within the industry and for the government um, on that site. So I encourage you to to reach out and explore you know, the information that's there. And I'm going to be very frank with you. Um, when you do approach us, um, you know, please, please have done a little bit of research, right? Please go look at this website. Um, and if, you know, have an idea of um, your target 
customer, right? GVIT does a lot of things for a lot of different government agencies. We're big, we can do that. Um, we didn't start big, we, you know, we're actually over the 50 years were a conglomeration of businesses and we've just grown up over a long period of time, but we're staffed uh, so that, you know, we have people that are experts in defense and people that are experts in the federal civilian group and what you can do. And I kind of spoke to this a little bit in the beginning is, you know, come to us with a targeted industry, um, you know, targeted customer. You know, so let's say you're interested in um, uh, trying to think of, you know, something specific, for example, the VA, right? Come to us and say, we, the, I know the VA is doing XYZ program. They're doing this work, um, you know, have done your research, not only on us, but on the VA. And, and that way, you know, when you, when you do get that meeting, with uh, someone like Mr. Furdock, he's not having to explain to you what the VA does or what, you know, what the program is. You know, you you need to go do some research on the VA and and talk with this Ostbu. The VA has a, an incredible Ostbu department. Uh, my team talks to a lot of the government Ostbu offices. There is, and and I would. I would like to say we came across one of their their guides and Wendy maybe help me out here. It's um, it's the VA. Uh, it, it's a really good resource and we share this resource with with small businesses that we talk to on a regular basis. It's um, I'm trying to find that on my link, but it, it's uh, is it for market research? Yes. Yeah, it's okay. It's a really, it's a really good guide and we actually share that with with folks uh, as well, because it um, it's important that you have your uh, customer targeted, you know, and that you know about that customer that way. When you talk to our growth and business development folks, y you sound like, you know, what you're doing, right? You sound like, you know, what the VA is doing. Our people are going to be very interested in that. And maybe you have some kind of niche capability that we don't have as a large company. The, the thing that uh, is very beneficial to us when working with small businesses is that you are more agile than we can be. We're a big corporate institution with, you know, a lot of a, a very long approval process. Small businesses don't necessarily have that because you're small and you can make quick decisions about how you do things. So um, when you do come to have those conversations, have done your research a little bit. Um, you know, don't come and, and say, what can I do for you? Um, it's come and say, I can do this for you because I know you're good at this, but maybe you're lacking in this area over here. And we just happen to be experts in that area. So um, I hope that makes sense. Um, one of the, the things that this office, our office has been trying to do is to help make those really good connections and train people on what you know, how to present themselves. We try to help you um, with your value proposition so that we get the attention of our growth and business development teams. Um, you know, it's it's amazing how, how busy they can get. So whatever we can do to help you uh, present yourself in such a way that you catch their attention and get that phone call, that's what we're trying to do to help you. And we, we talk a lot about this on that weekly VChat. So please do send us an email at uh, smallbusiness at gdit.com so we can get you those invites. Thank you, Robin. And I just want to concur what she said um, regarding the market research. We actually conducted a training yesterday, which um, will be uh, once released, uh, located on our YouTube channel. That information is a great resource. It's a part of our Backtop Procurement Readiness Series. We basically break down the acquisition process for the small business community uh, from the, the beginning to the end so that you can be able to see, um, you know, all, all the pieces without getting a, a lump uh, of the information all at one time. And in that market research, as uh, Robin stated, you got to come to that potential client, that potential partner with already knowing about 
what they already have at the table because you are coming to that table, especially if you're looking at subcontracting opportunities. So you wanna make sure that when you ask those questions, well, you know, do you, um, what, for whatever it may be, these are the services that my small business provides. Hey, GDIT, are there potential um, subcontracting opportunities out there? That means that you should have already, in your market research, have gone over to GDIT's website and looked at all pieces that they had on there, clicked on all the buttons that are on there, uh, you know, any information that they posted. If GDIT has any social media accounts, you've looked at all of that information because then you would have already answered your question. And like Robin said, when you then reach out to their small business office or any one of the individuals that are on this panel right now, uh, you, you would come to them and say, hey, I, I noticed that you know, you're missing this, or this is what my, my business will be able to assist, you know, GDIT with, and this is how we can partner together. You know, you can, uh, you know, phrase it in many different ways, but basically that's how you're coming to the table, uh, you know, with those opportunities that they have out there. I know we have about uh, eight minutes that are left. I'm going to look at a few more questions. Um, do GDIT have a subcontracting goal? And if so, are they able to meet their goal? That is an, oh, sorry, Robin, did you want to take it? Oh, you go, you go ahead. Oh, uh, it's an excellent question. We have so many goals across the board. Um, so we um, hold a comprehensive subcontracting plan with the DOD um, and we um, have goals ascribed to that. And then on our individual contracts, we have um, a host of goals as well. And um, luckily, you know, um, we, we do uh, well with our goals. I don't believe, and Robin can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm able to publicly state what the numbers are or how much we've met or any of that information um, because I do believe it's proprietary. Um, but yes, we do have goals. We actively involve um, ourselves when working with small businesses and, um, you know, increasing, um, you know, the spend where we can. Um, and overall, our, our general strategy as small business offices to be always, uh, you know, kind of open and, um, you know, supporting our small businesses just, you know, for those opportunities for um, a lot of um, for, for your, your engagement as well. Robin, did you have anything to add to that? Um, yes, I and and as Virginia says, we do have a lot of goals because the government requires us to have goals at for each contract. Um, we are part of the te uh, the comprehensive subcontracting test program for the DOD, so we can combine some of our contracts under that um, that uh, plan. But for v the VA and uh, pretty much every other contract we have at the prime, we we have specific goals by contract. And uh, the slide I had presented earlier says we have 4,000, roughly 4,000 contracts. So yes, we have goals. Um, are we meeting goals? Um, we, you know, each program is a little different and, um, you know, we do better in some goal, some contracts than we do others just because of the nature of the work that we're doing. For example, if you're a hub zone, um, you know, there's not a lot of hub zones that are in technical services, right? They tend to uh, support industry and in other ways um, and support the government in other ways. So we do have challenges meeting goals in various categories. Uh, but because the goals can be different on each contract, I can't tell you which contract needs what companies. And where we determine where the determination is made is back early in the proposal process when when the government releases the solicitation, the government directs us as to what goals we should use because we support defense their their goals are going to be different from the VA or uh, the Department of State. Um, each government agency has different uh, goal commitments. So, um, you know, we, we respond to whatever those goals are and depending on the work that needs to be done and uh, where it's to be done, you know, that that could bring its own challenges. So. That's kind of a convoluted answer. Yes, we have lots of goals. It depends on the contract and it depends on the government agency and um, and it depends on the type of work that we're doing. Um, you know, whether or not we're having challenges. So overall, we're a big company. There's a we do over and I think Josh just posted it up for me. Um, 
let me find out. I'm sorry. Uh, how many over 4 billion in subcontracting in the past 5 years. So we do subcontract quite a lot of work and I think. I think we tend to get, uh, and I may be speaking off base here a little bit, uh, but around 40% overall of that goes to small business, roughly. And again, contract based, but overall we do need small businesses to support us in uh, meeting the mission, the government mission. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude this. I want to first thank you, Robin, Jeff, and Virginia for providing this valuable information to everyone today. Um, Robin did post the links in the chat for any questions that were not answered. Uh, we will get back in contact with you to respond to you, the Strategic Outreach and Communications Office. Uh, please allow us a few days uh, for transparency. Usually the uh, WebEx, when it generates the report of attendees in our Q&A, we won't be able to uh, see it until the next day. So just allow us uh, about uh, 48 hours to get back in contact with you and we will address any pending questions. Uh, everyone, as you see on the screen, please join us next week for our kickoff of the second part of our podcast series, Straight Talk Business 102. This is a three-part series, just like the first, and it is part of our Vet Talk Procurement Readiness Series that I spoke about earlier. It's a breakdown of anything and everything small businesses need to know regarding the acquisition process. If you haven't listened to any of the trainings we have conducted in this series, I highly recommend that you visit our YouTube channel and watch the recording, especially with market research that we conducted yesterday. Uh, also, don't forget to complete the survey and enjoy the rest of your week.